Hey guys, what is up? Stickboy here, back again for another reaction. And tonight we're going to get into part three of uh, Turnabout Theater from Elements of Justice. Um, interesting thing happened. Um, the, well, not just one, but two of the creators uh, of that channel um, apparently watched the reaction and uh, kind of gave me some feedback, uh, which was pretty cool. Um, they were really supportive, and, and I thought that was really awesome. And I think that's the first time that uh, I've ever had a reaction where the creator of the video actually watched my reaction. So, uh, yeah, that was really neat, and uh, I definitely appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, I'm ready to get back into this, and I don't want to make this intro too long because, again, very long video, and it's, it's already really late. I'm just... Uh, you know, having issues sleeping. So I figure I'm not going to be asleep in the next two hours anyway. So we might as well just go ahead and run this two-hour video in the middle of the night. Um, <laughs> so I, I really wanted to get to this sooner. I um, just had some things come up. Uh, the last three days have just been really crazy. Of course, you know, Thursday I went and watched the play. And um, Friday had a, kind of an unexpected emergency here that I had to deal with. And didn't really give me a whole lot of time. And then Saturday was just weird. It was just weird altogether. So never really, it was a long work day in the first place. And then once I got home, it was just, I don't know, it was just one of those off days. Uh, so I didn't really feel like getting in front of the camera. So enough of that, though. Um, getting into this, um, it looks like we're going to see Surrey. Because she's on the thumbnail. And also... Um, they mentioned her, they, they, they brought her up at the very end of part two, where um, they're going to interview the contestants of the last uh, fashion contest, and probably Surrey was one of them. And we've established that Surrey is still kind of sore about what happened in Rarity Takes Manhattan with her, Rarity beating her anyway, even though she stole Rarity's line. And then Rarity didn't know she won until Coco told her. I think that um, I think Surrey was second place, so she was going to take the prize by default if Rarity didn't claim it. So the fact that uh, that Coco went and told Rarity about it um, basically took the prize out from under her. So she's I guess she's kind of salty about that, even though she cheated in the first place. I don't know. I guess that's how that works. But um, yeah, I. I, you know, I saw her at the beginning, you know, in the first, in part one, we, we saw her and was like, oh, yeah, she's, she's got a little bit of history uh, with both of them. But it, it'd be kind of strange to think that she would be uh, capable of murder, that she would go so far as murder, at least with, not without an accomplice of some sort. So I'm, I don't see, I don't know, I just don't see Surrey, you know, knocking overall concept out with a weapon and then knocking... Um, Coco out with a weapon. I don't see her being that violent of a of a person. So I'm wondering if she maybe had an accomplice of some sort. So we're going to get into that. Um, that's all I want to say about that. I've got to be really careful where I comment. I, I want to do a good commentary, but at the same time, I noticed whenever I watched this back, um, well, I didn't watch my own reaction back, um, but I did watch part two again, uh, and I noticed that I missed a lot of things. I missed a lot of dialogue. So I got to be really careful where I commentate because I find that if I comment in the wrong place, I miss things that are important. So uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to have volume. So I think we're good to go here. All right. Yeah, this is going to play. So we are still in Manhattan District Court. Let's get the headphones on and let's get started. Um, I'm ready to see how this ends. So, um, apparently I'm supposed to stay through the credits of this, so I probably would have done that anyway because of the way I run these reactions, the way I run this uh, video, I have to basically let the whole thing play so that I can paste it over my reaction, but yeah, we'll see what this is all about. So here we go, in three, two, one, play. Alright, February 12th, 11.30 a.m., Manhattan District Court. Courtroom number two. Okay. 
We've got a lobby number two and a courtroom number two, and I think it's hilarious that the judge Court is there. Now That's so funny. Prince Blueblood, has the police brought the results of the hoof print analysis? Yes, we are jumping right into this thing. Your honor. Then please share your findings with the court. He doesn't seem too happy about that, does he? Well, don't just stand What'd there looking irritated. Say something. It, it's just as the defense claims. The footprints don't belong to either the defendant or the victim. Well, it... So, do they really belong to one of the other contestants in that fashion contest? Okay, we're jumping yes, straight to well, that. Just as Princess Twilight requested, we compared the prints found backstage and on the catwalk to those of the contestants. Okay. Apparently, some observant pony down at Forensics noticed that only one contestant has any connection to any pony involved in this case. That's gonna be sorry. He checked their prints first and found a perfect match. Wow. Okay. Can I get that guy in all of my future cases, please? <laughs> You actually found a match? Then please tell us whose hoof prints are they? The hoof print analysis has concluded that the one who left those hoof prints at the time of the crime was a mare by the name of Suri Polomare. Dang. Okay. Suri so she was on the catwalk. So, Twilight was right after all. Okay, so that right there should be enough to uh, acquit. We Recently should have quit Coco right now. Recess. She has just arrived and is waiting in the witness lobby, Your Honor. Then please bring her to the stand at once. You'd think she'd try to get away. Name and occupation, please. I I'm surprised that she would come not under arrest. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I was in the middle of something very important, and then the police barged into my apartment and demanded that I come Oh, okay, they the did arrest house. her. Okay, I was gonna say. Witness, I would appreciate it if you would state your name and occupation for the record. I need to finish my dresses before tomorrow. I'll be ruined if I don't finish soon. Sorry, you, you have, uh, more important you don't just drop matters. on some pony like me and take me away from my duties, okay? <laughs> you have more important things to worry about at this point. Occupation! Fine. Sorry, Polo Mare. I am a fashion designer. If you were at the crime scene, you're pretty much accused you of murder at this point. Are you all called to the stand today? No, I am not. The police who showed up at my apartment didn't tell me a thing. But you are called here you don't because have a... you are suspected of murdering a costume designer by the name of Overall Concept. <laughs> what? Murder? I did no such thing. I'm too busy dealing with my own problems to commit something so heinous. Mm. I see. It does seem a really? little You're extreme for That's her. all you have to say to that? Well then, does the defense have any objections? As shocking as it may sound, I do, Your Honor. Based on the analysis that the prosecution revealed, the hoof prints belong to Miss Polomare. She must have been the one who made them at the scene of the crime. Which means she must also be the one who stole overall concept special fabric and murdered him. Huh. Well, a human is here to accuse me of something I didn't do. Don't make me laugh, okay? Then how do you explain these hoof prints left behind? You're awfully the calm for really shows that they're yours. Having a match now, for being at a crime scene. I didn't commit any sort of theft or murder, but if it makes you feel any happier, I'll tell you what I was doing that night. You're actually going to cooperate it's not like any of you are giving i was gonna say what choice does she have besides i'm in the middle of something very important so the sooner i get out the sooner i can get back to work well we appreciate your cooperation miss polo mayor now please testify as to your whereabouts at the time of the incident this though is really strange because this is strange though because at this point i think you could acquit Coco. This would be a completely separate trial. I was indeed at the play that night. It was during the intermission that I went to the dressing room to meet up with Coco. As soon as the second Maybe. act started, I, mean, I took a casual walk backstage. I went up the catwalk, walked across, and went back down on the opposite side. I then went out the back door and left the theater before the incident happened. Okay, well that 
matches the that matches the hoof prints. So you admit that you were actually at the theater. Don't act so surprised. I never denied that. I'm not convinced that she's the yeah, murderer, though. I am in a hurry right now. I've said what happened. Can I go home now? I have more important things to do, okay? Then you better hope I don't find anything that makes you stay longer. Indeed, Mr. Wright. You may now cross-examine the witness. I guess I can't really hide this. I was indeed at the play that night. Hold it! You said you were busy earlier. Were you also this busy on the night in question? Of course I was. I'm currently in a fashion contest and the dresses need to be finished soon. I'm not done yet, so I need all the time I can get to finish them. Like the time you're all wasting right now. Is the contest really that important? Of course it is. This contest can make or break a designer's career. If this contest is such a big deal, why did you go to the theater? I needed a break. I felt going to the theater would help me unwind. I knew Coco Palmel was working there, so I thought I might as well give her a visit. Yeah, because you like her so much. Palmel. What exactly were you doing with the defendant, witness? It was during the intermission that I went to the dressing room to meet up with Coco. Hold it! You went during the intermission. I was late getting to the theater, so I couldn't make it backstage before the play started. When the play went on break, I figured it was the best opportunity to get backstage. It was an overall concept. But aren't the staff in the theater oh. guarding the stage? I find it hard to believe that they would let someone in the audience go backstage. I've been to the theater many times, so the staff are quite familiar with me. They just let me through. Okay, so the we need to... The didn't mention anything about you going backstage. You didn't ask him. That's probably because they had no reason to. I wasn't there when the crime occurred, after all. In that case, why didn't Miss Palmel mention anything about you? Uh, uh, Miss you Palmel didn't ask her. You lied about any pony else being involved. I find that very hard to believe. If she actually didn't want to get caught as the murderer, she would have mentioned a third party was involved right from the beginning. In fact, not mentioning just that makes your previous theory rather unlikely. Why would my client try so hard to create false evidence and then not even bother to mention that a third party was there, especially if there actually was one there? That's a good question. knows what the defendant was thinking unless you have a solid objection to this testimony <laughs> that's not a good argument just blue blood on. very well that leads me to my next question why did you meet with miss palmel that is none of your concern actually it is i beg to differ your business with miss palmel has everything yeah. to do with this case well if it's that important i was just there to visit her visit why her? for what Nothing in particular, just to see her. From what I hear, the two of you aren't exactly on good terms. Yeah, that's what I understand, Ms. too. Palmel said she used to be your assistant, and she quit. Our professional history is irrelevant. I was just there to see her again for old time's sake and put everything behind us. Um, so, I doubt that. What did you talk about? Nothing much. I was wondering how she was doing. She and her friend were just working on this fabric as we talked. Special fabric? Did you know about the fabric prior to your visit? No, this was the first time I'd heard about this fabric. They let me have a look, and I even touched a bit. Very soft fabric, I should say. That explains the hoof so prints. she felt the fabric. That would explain how she got paint on her hooves to make the hoof prints. As for the path itself, though... There's definitely a... As soon as the second act started, I took a casual walk backstage. Hold it! Took a casual walk around? Well, I was finished with our conversation, so I just figured that looking around backstage was a good way to unwind. The area was way bigger than I thought, so I couldn't help but wander around looking at everything. It reminded me of the last fashion competition I was in, and of seeing the models wearing my designs on stage. If only I had won the contest, I would... <clears throat> I want to stop but right there, huh? Ago. I am far too busy to talk about my past accomplishments. Or lack thereof, according to Rarity and Coco. 
Couldn't you have just watched the show instead? If I decided to watch the show, then I would have gotten too distracted to get back to work on my dresses. But I still was a little curious about the play, so I took a little peek. From a different perspective, you could say. Yeah, from the catwalk? I went up the catwalk, walked across, and went back down on the opposite side. Hold it! Went up to the catwalk. I wanted to see the play for a short bit before I left. I must admit, the height was very intimidating, but it sure was a great view. But neither playwright nor the stage troops mentioned anything about you going up to the catwalk. Why would they not mention you being backstage, especially since you're not part of the audience or the staff? Objection! That's a if good question. If you recall playwright's testimony, you would know that he was paying attention to the play. He only looked at the catwalk because he heard ponies running. That's true. This witness had no reason to make any sort of ruckus, so it's possible that she went up to the catwalk quietly right. without any pony noticing. Especially, Especially since the backstage was dark at that moment. And the play was going on, so you'd want to deny that. It would explain the hook. You'd want to be quiet well, not to disturb the play. Explanation. It has to be something else, and I'm going to show her why all of this is false. Any final statements, witness? I then went out the back door and left the theater before the incident happened. Hold it! Just so we're all clear, you came in through the main entrance and left through the back door. And that's what you're saying. That's correct. Would you mind adding this to your testimony, for clarity's sake? If it means I can leave soon, then fine. The witness will add this clarification to her testimony. It's very suspicious, though. I entered the though. theater via the main entrance and left through the back door before anything even happened. Happy now? OBJECTION! Miss Polymer, there's a significant contradiction in your testimony. What? I see no such contradiction, human. Stop trying to force your reasoning when the trial's not going in your favor. Actually, it's kind of going like very much... Like you want to talk. Mr. Roy, it's going very much you in your favor. To explain this contradiction to the court? Certainly, Your Honor. Suri yeah, Kane I missed it. left the theater before the murder took place, and therefore she has no connection to this case. Well, I have it on good faith that this claim is a bold-faced lie. Okay. And what evidence do you have to support that statement? Well, first, let's clear up a separate issue regarding Suri's movements that night. She mentioned that she entered the theater through the front, which was where the audience sat. I find that very odd. Odd? But she was an attendee. That's where every pony goes when they enter the theater. Right. You're right. That's where the audience goes. That is, but she you're actually a was part, of the, part of the audience, was she? Explain! The witness said that she was late to the theater and arrived after the play had started. According to your own words, Prince Blue Blood, the show in question was sold out around noon that day. It was actually Coco who purchased oh, yeah. the last ticket and gave it to one of her friends as a gift. That's right. This means that if Miss Polymer just went to the theater on a whim, she would have she had couldn't no have way got in the front door to get inside the theater. It's been a few days. I forgot about that little detail. Order, order, witness. Have you been lying to this court? T no, uh, of course not. I must have gotten confused. What with the stress of this competition. Uh -huh. I bought my ticket a few days in advance, so I was still able to get into the theater. I mean, that is possible. Problems. She needs Even to... If could she show her true. ticket? That doesn't solve the biggest issue with your claim. There's another? Oh, yes. And this will be the one that will reveal just how closely connected you are with this case. Please explain, Mr. Wright. Of course, Your Honor. If she the bought a ticket... Please sure to interrogate all 5,000 attendees in the theater. Yeah. If you had bought your ticket, then the police would have discovered your absence immediately. That's they would true. have only interrogated 4,999 members of the audience. That means the only possible explanation for this inconsistency is that you were never part of I the I forgot audience. about that, too. This... this can't be! Miss Polo Man, it seems more and more likely that you've perjured yourself. 
What do you have to say to explain this? Uh, isn't it obvious? I went back to my seat after I saw that it was raining outside. Jeez, uh, why are you picking apart every insignificant detail? Because they're not insignificant details. Back to your seat. How did you do that? Yeah. What do you mean, how did I do that? I walked back through the stage wing and returned to the audience. Objection! The, Unfortunately for you, those go out the back door. Impossible. The hoof prints go out the back door. Why? If you recall, the stage wings were being watched during the second act of the play. There were stage hooves in the right wing, while playwright and his stage manager were in the left. Even if they could have somehow failed to notice the witness going to and from the catwalk, there's no way they would have missed her walking right past them. And she also said she left out the back door. But the right wing was empty following the incident. She could have made her way back to the audience at that point. Yes, that's exactly what happened. Didn't she say and she left out the back door? The was empty. Then the police obviously took your name down when they interrogated you. Yeah, there's right. still that. <sighs> there's still that. Tartarus with you, you filthy human! <laughs> Seriously, Blue Blood, what is your interest in this anyway? Was this witness among those who were interrogated? Yeah, you'd have to know that. No, she was not. What? How dare you? What do you mean, how dare so, you? As we can see, he can't lie about that. It would be on record. The total number of which added up to a full house of 5,000. This, in addition to the glowing hoof prints, conclusively proves that Suri did not enter the theater as a member of the audience. She came in through the back door with the express purpose of stealing a roll of overall special fabric. It's too bad you can't pin the uh, stealing of rarities line on her from before, because that would... Witness. Is she going to confess? So, this is how far the equestrian royalty have fallen, huh? What? How pitiful. You can't even protect a damsel in distress from being falsely accused. Now see here, I am trying my hardest to help. Shut up! I do not believe I gave you permission to speak. Um, Excuse what kind of power me? does she have exactly? I am a prince, I'll have you know. The <laughs> nephew of Princess Celestia. You the least recognized the prince in all of Equestria. <laughs> respect? Don't make me laugh. A prince who uses the power he's borrowing from his aunt for no other purpose than to grant himself prestige among the elites of Canterlot isn't some pony worth respecting. What is what does any of this have to do Sarah with the uh... the adults are talking now, okay? Miss Polo Man, restrain yourself or you will be held Yeah, this is this is irrelevant. This is completely Jeez. And here I thought a pony couldn't get any more intimidating. Why does she have to why is she intimidating at this point? What did she mean this is how far the equestrian royalty have fallen? Huh? Now witness. Yeah, what is she talking about? To the court how you came to be at the theater on the night of the murder. Fine, I admit it. I was not there as an audience member. So you were. So you've admitted lies. Yes, I was. Witness, what are you doing? You realize that lying to the court would make me look. Shut up. It's not about you, I dude. I care about how it makes you look. I don't recall you actually helping me out. I beg your pardon? You dare talk back at me, witness? In case you hadn't noticed, I'm trying to save your sorry flag. From what? Then how about you stop sitting on yours and make yourself useful for once? Are you really challenging my patience? Yeah, just let them go <laughs> at it, because they're both just killing themselves right here. patient ever since I got here, and I have no time to be patient. I have dresses to work on. Order in the court! Witness, you've just committed perjury! That is true. I will allow you an opportunity to clear the air. I suggest you take it rather than argue with the prosecution. Now, why would you lie to this court? Maybe if you would all just be quiet for one moment, I can explain. Do tell. Let's get to the chase, shall we? 
You're trying to say that I stole the fabric and killed the costume designer, correct? That's right. Yeah. Uh oh. Why do I have a bad feeling about what she's going to say? It does yeah, seem like the case. Then why wouldn't I have just left the theater after stealing it? I had no reason to stick around and murder overall, correct? But what if he caught you trying to escape? You'd naturally want to stop him from catching you. Stop him, perhaps? But there are several ways to do that without killing him. Okay. That is true. If all she wanted to do was steal it. Well, perhaps you had some sort of hidden connection to the victim that we don't know about yet. In that case, Your Honor, I would like to testify regarding my connection to this pony overall concept. Okay. What are you doing, witness? I'm supposed to be the one to call for things like that. What is his deal? You actually do your job instead of waiting for me to do it for you. Maybe if you were actually competent at your job, I wouldn't be standing here having my name dragged through the mud and my patience tested because of this human attorney's endless questioning. If you want something done right, you do it yourself. Ugh. I can never rely on others to do work for me anymore. Like I always say, it's every pony for themselves in the Yeah, you, you've said that a few times. Well then, witness, please testify to the court about your connection to the victim. Yeah, Blue Blood is uh, a terrible prosecutor. I admit, I wasn't part of the audience. This is this is all about him. I noticed that the tickets were sold out, so I figured I'd come in the back door. The reason I came to the theater was to visit Coco Palmel and nothing else. It was then that I first met overall. The concept. problem is that after my visit, I left the theater. The problem is that I she's no changed her story. Because she said she came in through the front and they just so let her in because all you have to say, because witness? she's there all the time. What else can I say? That's all that happened. It's quite a short testimony for us to dissect. Then all I need to do is press for more information. She's bound to reveal something. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please begin your cross-examination. I admit, I wasn't part of the audience. Hold it! You acknowledge that you willingly trespassed in the theater. Right? Yes, but it wasn't as if I was going to harm some pony. Besides, it's not like any of you have an ever trespassed. That's irrelevant. Before. There's a big difference between a cow ranch and a big city theater, you know. Were that's you that's irrelevant to... anyway. I planned to, but... They were sold out. I noticed that the tickets were sold out, so I figured I'd come in the back door. Hold it! Now, were there no other entrances in the theater? The only one I knew was the back door. And there were no ponies guarding the back door? I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be in this mess if there were guards in the back to stop me, wouldn't you say? Well, she said that they let him in. That they let her in, that she's a friend of the theater. The reason I came to the theater was to it's visit just, Coco Palmel it's just that and nothing else. She's telling two different stories. Why did you want to visit Miss Palmel? She invited me to come over. So you were a guest? Yes. I actually went there because Coco gave me a letter that day to come to the theater near the end of the play. Hmm, okay. Letter. Coco didn't mention anything about a letter to Siri. This has got to be another lie. Unless she can produce a copy of that letter. This letter by any chance. Not with me, but... Uh-huh. She hasn't hit it. So she yeah, we're gonna need to see that letter. Then how do we know that everything you just said was the truth? Especially since you've already lied. You can't know for certain, but you absolutely cannot see that letter. Actually, She's really impressive about this letter, but I don't have any proof that this letter was there or not. Guess I'll come back to this when the time comes. If she is accused of the murder, so, they could actually. What did you do after you arrived at the theater? They could actually order that she. Go for a bit and. They it could get a warrant to search for it, is what I meant to say. Hold it! You never met the victim before that point? No, but I've heard of him. I mean, who hasn't? He earned his fame a few years ago in the same fashion contest I'm participating in. Something I'd like to get back to working on. 
that checks out with what Blue Blood said earlier. Did you talk to him at all? No, he was too consumed by his work. He was busy with a sheet of gorgeous fabric at the time. I see. And what did you do after your visit with Coco? After my visit, I left the theater. I had no reason to kill the victim. Hold it! You did have a reason! You went to steal the fabric! Even if I did, which I didn't, by the way, I wouldn't have needed to kill Mr. Concept in order to get away with it. That's true. But he was chasing me. Unless, you yeah. You had to get him off your tail somehow. That's right, he I was chasing me. that hanging some pony would be considered a bit extreme if all I wanted to do was get him to stop chasing me. Am I right? Uh, I mean, you could have just knocked him out, Mr. but at the Wright, same time... Do you have any evidence to disprove Miss Polomare's claims about having no motive to kill the victim? But he still would. He still saw you, right? I don't have anything that shows a connection between Suri and Overall. And I can't deny the fact that murdering him to get away with a theft is too right. extreme. Especially since we know that the victim was knocked unconscious before he died. Hey... Twilight. Yeah, I was gonna. I was just Any about. Ideas? I was just about to say, Twilight, you've been really quiet. Twilight. Huh? Oh, sorry. What were you asking me? She's still worried about Sorry's that whole royalty of fallen over. thing. As much as I hate to say it, I can't help but think that she wouldn't kill him if she could have made a clean getaway. And yes, I've been noticing Fluttershy over there in the audience. Perhaps she didn't have a motive to kill Overall after all. Then, perhaps her motive for murder is actually related to someone else instead. Oh, good thinking, Twilight. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have an answer? Your Honor, the defense is willing to concede that the witness did not have a direct motive to kill the victim. You see? So you finally acknowledge that I'm innocent. Not quite. Not quite. You didn't have a motive to kill yeah. the victim, but you did have a motive to hurt someone else. Mr. Wright, are you suggesting that there were two victims that night? Indeed I am, Your Could Honor. she have been trying to hurt Coco? What nonsense is this? There was only one victim at the theater that night. Overall concept. No, Coco was hit on the head Your and Honor, knocked unconscious I would like too. To, to add that last statement to her testimony. What? I'm not sure how this will help, but I guess I'll follow along. Witness, please add that last statement to yeah, your testimony. Yeah, that's a slight contradiction because Coco yeah. was hit over the head too. There was only one victim at the theater that night. Overall concept. Objection! We, we established only that Coco was hit too. It seems you've forgotten about someone else who ended up as a victim in this case. What are you blathering on about, attorney? Overall concept was the only pony who was killed. But he the wasn't the only one attacked. But that doesn't mean he was the only victim. Quit wasting my time and just say what you want to say. Yeah. Okay? Go ahead. Very well. It's true overall concept was the one murdered, but being murdered isn't a requirement in order to become a victim. I'm just as confused as everyone else. Judge. Could you please explain, Mr. Wright? Don't you remember? For example, someone being the victim of assault. Right. And while the victim was assaulted before his death, someone else was also attacked at the scene of the crime. Pamel. Miss Pamel? You mean with that stain on her mane? That's the one. Yes. She was knocked exactly unconscious. Objection! So what does that prove? It doesn't prove that the witness was the one who caused that mark on her mane. No, but it proves Objection. that she lied again. Well, it's not exactly proof that she was the one who attacked Miss Pommel. It would establish her If Overall was trying to protect her. If she was trying to kill Think Coco in the beginning, and Overall was, was trying to, to protect her. Down, all she needed to do was run away. As she said herself, she never knew the victim, leaving her no reason to commit murder. Finally, you understand. I told you I wouldn't want to do something like kill him. But then some pony else... But what if she had to, reason. to get... What's this now? What do you mean? You know who Coco Pommel is, correct? Is this a joke? I've already mentioned I do. And what was your past relationship with her again? Well... I... Before you say anything, I should warn you, both Rarity and Coco are listening, and I'm sure they'd be willing to testify to the truth if the need arises. Yeah. Mm. Objection! 
Now, what does Miss Polomer and Miss Pomel's past relationship a whole have lot with any of this? As much to do as Miss Pomel's living with overall Miss concept. Miss Pomel and Rarity, they had some very negative things to say about Miss Polomer. Uh. In another fashion contest that both Rarity and Suri Polomer had entered, Miss Polomer stole some of Rarity's own special fabric to make dresses with and took all of the credit. Yet, it wasn't even the witness who made the dresses. Coco made them. What? <laughs> but that's not all. At the end of the contest, she lied to Rarity by saying that she had lost, and made Coco lie to her as well. In response to her dishonesty, Coco quit as Miss Polomere's pupil. You're saying that this witness has a history of lying and cheating? I think we just oh, saw that already today. If I did any of that, how does this have anything to do with this case? She's already it's committed perjury. Everything to do with it. I don't think we needed to prove she was a liar. I think now we've that done that. Their history together. Let's bring it back to the current incident. I can't even follow her testimony because she's telling two different stories. Left with the special fabric, but a certain former pupil was right behind him. Yes, that would be Miss Pomel. Uh huh. Oh! With Coco Palmel in the picture, it changes everything. I think anyone would have some feeling of animosity towards someone who called you out as a liar and a cheat in such a big contest. Am I right? Uh. Maybe the feeling was so deep-seated that you would do anything to get back at them. Maybe even frame them for murder. What? what? <laughs> Well, that would be a motive, too. Order! Order! Mr. Wright, explain what you mean at once! Shouldn't it be clear? Your Honor, the witness's motive in this case is not actually tied to the victim at all. Her motive was revenge against her former pupil, Coco Pommel. You're saying that the witness killed someone simply to frame another for their death? Well, that exactly. could do it. Here's how I think things played out. Miss Polymer was originally planning on just stealing the fabric and escaping. After she knocked overall out, she was about to make her exit, but then Coco showed up right behind the victim. After knocking her out too, Miss Polymer realized that she was in the perfect position to get revenge on the pony who had caused her such great humiliation. That's right. She hanged overall just to get revenge on Coco Pommel. Well, I mean, that's just as plausible as framing Coco, as what, what they accuse Coco of. But it's not going to fly. Yet. <laughs> They're going to need more. They're going to need Who's more uh, evidence than that. <laughs> Witness? Shut up! I've had enough of this farce of a trial! Listen to you all! This is what Equestria is depending on as its means of serving justice? This court is an absolute farce! Now, now, calm down, Witness! Silence, she... you senile or bull! She can't do that! Excuse me! She doesn't have any power! Yes, a senile old fool. You're the one who's supposed to be mediating this trial, correct? Then why haven't you put an end to that human lawyer's baseless slandering against me? Be well, because he he's got a valid sense. argument. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Even though he has no evidence to support his claims, you just let him prattle on anyway. And you... Me? You're supposed to be protecting me, are you not? But protecting you her said you wanted to shut up it's let him let him talk to stand there and complain it's to prosecute that little traitor over there okay so why don't you go and get started by debunking this lawyer's theory Whoa. judge are you listening to this Ugh. do i have to do everything myself absolutely worthless Seems as if it's not only every pony for themselves in that big city, it's every pony for themselves no matter where you are. Witness. What? 
You're saying that my theory is completely false. You didn't kill the victim or frame Ms. Palmel for his death. Of course not. In that case, I'd like you to testify to the full truth of what you did at the theater that night. Ugh, fine. Since neither the judge nor the prosecution will help me- It's not their job to help you. Myself. Very well. Come on, it's not It's not their job. Shut up. I know what I need to you do. You can't tell the judge to shut up. He can hold you in contempt. This worn out years of yours. Why are they in why are they intimidated by her? If we're finally approaching the end of our little play here. Time she can't do anything to them. Market. She has no power, she has no authority, nobody behind her. Why are they intimidated by her? I it makes no sense. After receiving a letter from her. After our meeting, I left the room, only to have overall start chasing me. I ran up to the catwalk hoping to outrun him. Suddenly, I heard a thud, and I noticed that Overall was on the ground, and the fabric fell out of his mouth. I saw Coco come from behind, grab the roll of fabric, and hit him over the head. She then took his body, wrapped a noose around his neck, and dropped him from the ledge. And you just watched? Coco told me to unwrap the fabric from the roll and leave the building, and I begrudgingly obliged. She has already lied. You and saw Miss Coco murder Mr. Concept? <laughs> and didn't say anything, yes, didn't do anything. I am a witness to the actual crime. Why did you not mention Why didn't you come this forward? Before? This is crucial information. Coco told me to keep this a secret. It was her idea after all. But if this testimony is the truth, then that means... You're an accomplice! Yeah, you didn't do anything. I wanted to do this. Coco told me to keep quiet about it. I find that very hard to believe. You honestly think this sudden revelation that Coco somehow forced you to cooperate will convince anyone? Especially after Look, you've lied I twice. I saw what I saw, and I had to obey because I was afraid I would be her next victim, okay? She's trying so hard to frame Coco for all of this. All we gotta do is prove that she didn't do it. I think there's plenty of things she didn't take into account. We just need to show them. Yeah, this is, uh... This really is a farce of a trial, because... That judge could have held her in contempt three times already, and, and should have. And he's intimidated by her? This letter. Are you kidding me? Well, I found it under my door when I got back to my apartment. It was probably around four in the afternoon. Hmm? That's odd. I thought she was lying about the letter earlier, but she answered rather quickly there. And what time did you go to the theater? Well, I knew the play started at seven and lasted about two hours long, so I made sure to arrive at the theater around 8.45. Wasn't there a, According to the a autopsy, third act? The time of death was between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. This lines up perfectly. What did you do once you were there? I met up with Coco in the dressing room. She said she just wanted to catch up after not talking for a while. That's probably not. Probably two hours. She and her friend hours. overall concept were just finishing up coating a sheet of fabric with fluorescent paint. I even accidentally touched some of the wet paint when I went to feel the fabric. Overall scolded me for doing so. That mostly lines up with what Coco remembers. Is that a lucky guess? Or did she actually visit her? Did you do anything else during your visit? Nothing much, really. It's strange that Coco didn't say anything about Suri being there. Coco left the room for a moment to wash her hooves. There was really nothing left for me to talk about, so I just made my leave. As I did have to wash my hooves as well. However... I suddenly heard some kind of commotion. After our meeting, I left the room, only to have Overall start chasing me. For no reason? Overall started chasing you? It was so out of nowhere. He was holding a fabric roll in his mouth and he just had this very angry look on his face. I think you'd freak out too if a stallion like that just started running towards you. Can you stop well, he... trying to turn it around on me? <laughs> About this fabric roll, was it bare? No, it had the fabric Coco and he had just finished working on wrapped around it. 
My best guess is he was rolling up the fabric and then something disturbed him so he ran out of the dressing room with it. The victim rolled up the sheet of fabric while it was still wet. I don't buy it. Yeah, that doesn't... So, also, how did you react the rolled up sheet of fabric didn't have the, f the paint on it. I ran up to the catwalk hoping to outrun him. Hold it! Couldn't you have just gone straight for the back door? I could have, but I saw Coco Palmel on the other side of the backstage um, area, and I didn't want to crash into her, so I went up the catwalk instead. Coco came out of the dressing room. You saw Miss Palmel? For a brief moment, yes. She already she said that she went across the catwalk well. to watch the play but from up there. Have been able to she didn't say the anything catwalk. about being chased. Attention! You should know the answer to that by now, human. Playwright's testimony stated that he didn't see Miss Polymer go up to the catwalk when he saw the chase. In fact, it was you who suggested that she was far ahead enough that Playwright must have missed her. He's right. It was me who pointed That's that out. That's true. If anything, this at least confirms my suggestion. I just hope the rest of her testimony can line up with my theory. So what did you do when you reached the top? I was correct in thinking that going up to the catwalk would slow him down. What do you mean by that, witness? Suddenly, I heard a thud, and I noticed that overall was on the ground, and the fabric fell out of his mouth. At, at the very middle of the catwalk? Yes. And based on the sound of the clang he made, he must have tripped hard. Coco and Playwright mentioned something about hearing a clang as well. But would the victim tripping really make such a loud noise? Where did the fabric roll... Uh, well, roll after he dropped it? No, it really. It just landed right in front of him. Did you keep running after he tripped? I was going to originally, but then I saw something quite unsettling. I saw Coco come from behind, grab the roll of fabric, and hit him over the head. He doesn't. Uh uh, he doesn't have the paint on his head. Miss Polomare, that statement contains a glaring issue. Literally. Glaring? Care to explain, Mr. Wright? Come on, Judge! The witness claims that she saw Coco. Were you even in this court yesterday? On the head with it. I failed to see the problem with that statement. Well, if you recall, Coco's hooves didn't have a trace of paint on them. If the fabric was wet enough to cover Miss Polomare's hooves in paint, then it should have also covered Coco's when she grabbed it. Yeah. Hmm. It's a fairly simple explanation, human. Remember that okay. this paint could have been washed in the rain. Since this witness stated that Miss Pamel gave the fabric to her and left the theater with it, she didn't need to hide the fabric herself which means she wouldn't have needed to step outside completely, just far enough out that she could get her hooves wet. You see, this was all part of the defendant's plan to frame Miss Polomare for the crime. In that case, how do you plan to explain away these other two inconsistencies? I inconsistencies? Indeed. They arise from a detail in the autopsy report, uh, namely the areas where the fabric roll touched the victim. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? These guys the are so stated that they're so incompetent. The back of the head, and if Miss Pamel came from behind, it would naturally be the area where she would strike him. It's not what's been left behind on Overall's body that's the problem. It's what wasn't. The left judge behind. and the prosecutor are so what do you mean? incompetent. Have you forgotten already? The fabric had just been coated with fluorescent paint, and it was still wet at the time of the crime. If Overall was really holding it in his mouth, there would have been traces of paint left over in his mouth. Perhaps the paint was washed away by his saliva then. It would have been on his Even lips. He would somehow the case, lick his it lips. Matter, because there was another spot where the paint couldn't have been washed away. On his head? Mm. Ah, no! If Overall was hit on the back of the head with the wet fabric on the fabric roll, then some of the paint would have been discovered there! What? What's happening? Someone please enlighten me so that I can be shocked too. Twilight, you should have just let Celestia provide a, preside over this no other trial. Or residues were found on the victim's body aside from the glitter on his forehooves. We also know, thanks to the previous testimony, that the special fabric was indeed wrapped around the fabric roll at the time of the murder. And it was most definitely still wet. 
Based on all this evidence and the testimony presented up to this point, it is impossible for the victim to have been hit on the head with a fabric roll. What? They also need to examine that body to see if he was hit on the head with something else. That mark would still be there if he died at the scene. Then the only other explanation is the roll must have been empty this whole time. It would explain why there were no stains on him. Objection! Oh, okay, we're gonna change our story again. Prince Blue Blood, that cannot be the case. A torn piece of fabric was found on stage indicating that the fabric must have gone up the catwalk at some point. And even if we were to ignore that, the witness herself just claimed that the fabric was on the roll when it was brought yep, up. she did. Then that must mean that the defendant unwrapped the fabric from the roll as soon as she got up there and then hit overall with it. Unless you were a unicorn, unwrapping the roll would have taken far too much time mm -hmm. and overall would have managed to escape without being attacked. No matter what way you try to interpret it, it's impossible for Coco or anyone else to have used the fabric roll to hit the victim. While it was still wet. <laughs> so, what was the fabric roll used for then, Mr. Wright? It's become apparent that Suri Polymer was the only one who could have brought the fabric up to the catwalk. And why is that? To Overall couldn't steal have done it? so without getting paid on himself. And Coco couldn't have done it without being seen by playwright. So there's only one pony left. Process of elimination. Right, Prince Blue Blood? <laughs> so, Miss Polomare, do you deny that you were the one who carried the fabric roll up the catwalk? I don't think she can. There's no one else who could have done it. So you might as well. So what if I did? Huh? Listen here, human. Maybe I did steal the fabric. Maybe I did attack Coco Pommel. But here's the thing. This proves nothing! But what do you mean, proves nothing? You're saying that I knocked both the victim and Coco Pommel out with that fabric roll, right? No. Well, that's not what he said. How exactly. Did I manage to not leave any traces of paint on the victim myself then? Hmm? You're claiming that Coco couldn't have hit the victim with the roll because she would have left paint on him. Well, didn't we say yesterday that the assailant had another weapon? That is indeed true. But if you really did go to the theater to steal the fabric, it's possible that you might have prepared a weapon of your own to fend off anyone that would try to stop you. It's possible? I mean, we did talk well, about that. Then why don't you go ahead and prove that possibility? I can say for certain that I did not bring a single thing to the theater other than what I have on right now. So go ahead. Prove the existence of this other weapon if you can. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove the existence That's gonna be hard of a different weapon the witness could have used to knock out the victim? Um. What about her own hoofs? Are you kidding me? How am I supposed to do that? I've got no leads to go off of. It could be anything. <laughs> Admit it, you have nothing, filthy human. Your honor? Yes, Miss Polomare? I request an escort to take me back to my apartment. And hopefully, we can all put this travesty behind us. I'm afraid you will have to be brought in for questioning before that. You were an accomplice to the defendant, after all. But that I'm is sure true. The police can arrange for some form of transportation after that. <laughs> Whatever. It's still better than being charged for murder. No! If I don't think of something now, she's going to get away. No, she's not. She's she's going to be. Why? Like, there's nothing. I don't know what she could have used to knock the victim out. Calm down. There's got to be something we've overlooked. Well, we've already. How can I calm down now? Hang on a second. The real killer's about to get away. Phoenix, follow my lead. We're trying to acquit Coco Pommel, and I think we have, I think we have proven that she's <laughs> nice. I think what, we have proven that there's that? enough reasonable what doubt that you can't my me. convict her. She's a princess too. That's really all we're trying to do here. We can formally charge Suri. We can formally charge Suri and put her in a se separate trial. There's another princess? Oh, yeah. Unimportant right now, Phoenix. Uh, right. Sorry. Anyway, we need to think quickly here. 
Suri must have brought something to the theater that night to use as a weapon. But the only things she'll admit to having brought with her are the clothes she has on now. Then let's right. see if we can use those. Are you nuts? How could she have knocked someone out with an article of clothing? We'll think about that later. This is the only lead we have left right now. Well then, if there are no further objections, I believe it is time we conclude the cross-examination of this witness. <laughs> about time too. And you still have to be sent for questions. You still have to be sent in for questions. And like I said, I think we've already. Your Honor, like to present evidence at this time. We've cast a lot of doubt. Evidence. Yes, evidence that shows exactly what this witness used to attack overall concept on the night of the murder. Okay. Shut up! Impossible. You can't possibly have anything. Mr. Wright, please explain what you mean. They need to calm her down. They need to calm Surrey Faster. down. No, not just fast. Crazy. Miss Polomare must have somehow knocked out overall with just a piece of clothing. She's not wearing anything else that would be heavy enough to cause such a large bruise on the back of his head, though. So, time to think outside of the box. Instead of figuring out what she used on the victim, let's figure out what she did to him to cause that bruise. Couldn't she have just hit him with her own hoof? The hard hoof steps from them on the wooden floor were already bad enough. Mix that with a rattling cutlock and that loud clang. Could she have smacked That's his head against the railing? As it is. On the way up the stairs, I heard a loud clanging noise, and I ran as quickly as I could to see what happened. Time's up, Mr. Wright. The witness has made some valid points in her defense. Do you have anything to refute them? I do, Your Honor. I told you before, I didn't bring a weapon to the theater. You didn't need to. Oh, I believe you. You didn't bring anything of the sort. But, Mr. Wright, isn't your whole theory based on her having another weapon? The railing. It was and still is. Explain, human. What if this other weapon wasn't a conventional one? Meaning? The defense is of the opinion that we've been going about this the wrong way. Recall that playwright mentioned there was a loud clang during the chase. At least try and keep up, attorney. That was when the victim tripped. We just established this in Miss Polymer's testimony. Her third Did testimony. I hmm? I think that noise was really the moment when Overall was knocked unconscious. And how would that be? You've admitted that she had no weapon with her. What else could possibly have made that clang? It would have had to have been something metal. Like the cat ball. I completely agree. Your Honor, the defense proposes that the witness Suri Polomare knocked the victim out using the catwalk itself. Yeah. What? Yeah, she could have just hit his head against the rail. Shut up! Do you hear yourself, human? How in the world would I have been able to use a catwalk as a weapon? Simple. All you had to do was throw him against it. If he hit the back of his head against the railing hard enough, I'm sure that would have been able to knock him out cold. That's absolutely ridiculous. Objection! So you might be able to find a mark on that catwalk. The witness is a mayor of rather petite stature. Overall concept isn't that big either. She managed to overpower a fully grown stallion with nothing but her hooves. And then after doing so, throw him hard enough against the railing to knock him unconscious. Well, you're suggesting that Coco Pommel threw him over the railing completely lifeless. To knock him out, but she didn't do so with her bare hooves. Uh... Would this be related to that unconventional weapon you mentioned earlier, by any chance? Exactly, Your Honor. In fact, she kind of brought it into the court for all to see. I... what? Your Honor, this is the weapon Miss Polymer used to overpower the victim. Take that! You... you're saying she used... The scarf? The scarf? She used the scarf to trip him? Recall what the witness just said moments ago. 
say for certain that I did not bring a single thing to the theater other than what I have on right now. Nothing other than what she has on. Ah! Oh! If that's true, then the weapon she used should be clear as day. After making it to the catwalk, she took the scarf off of her neck and waited for the victim to ascend as well. It would have been he did, dark, she quickly right? wrapped the scarf around the unsuspecting overall's neck. The two no doubt struggled as he tried to free himself. But as his strength waned, Miss Polymer managed to knock out overall by throwing him against the catwalk's railing. Objection! Are you listening to yourself, human? If she had done that, she would have left marks around the victim's neck. Marks that I'm sure weren't just seen as having been caused by the rope. Am I right? Uh huh? Yeah. yeah. Then, just as Miss Polymer finished incapacitating overall, who should show up but Coco. After coming across a scene like that, she would have been too on guard for the witness to use her scarf again. So instead, she used the fabric roll she had with her to knock Coco out as well. Shut up! You! What are you even talking about? I did no such thing. Your Honor, please throw this lawyer out of the courtroom now! That's no less I'm plausible. Sorry, Polo, ma that is I no less plausible than what you accuse Coco of. Why is that? Mr. Wright's theory may seem far-fetched, but I cannot deny that what he has proposed is indeed a possibility. Prince Blueblood, any thoughts? I, uh, well... Oh dear. It seems we have reached an impasse. I suppose I have no choice but to suspend proceedings of this trial for another- Hold it! Your Honor, I, I, I have evidence to prove my innocence. Y you do? Well, let's hear it then. Very well. Okay. Mr. Wright, you're saying that I used my scarf to strangle the victim on the night of the murder, correct? Well, not exactly to death or anything, but something like that, yes. In that case, there should be blue marks on my scarf, right? I clearly wasn't aware of the paint that stained my hair since I left behind a pretty noticeable trail at the scene. So obviously, that means I wouldn't have washed it to get rid of those marks. Correct? Uh, there's no proof of that. I suppose so. Then go ahead. I give you permission to test my scarf for traces of paint. I promise you, you won't find anything on it. Well, Mr. Wright, do you wish to request that we test Miss Polo Mare's scarf? You can't prove that it wasn't washed. She's been home two nights. This feels like a trap. There's no doubt that she was unaware of the paint that night. If she had known, she wouldn't have left such a clear trail behind. In that case, the fact that she so eagerly gave up her scarf for testing can only mean that she's certain that whatever paint she left on has been washed off. Right. So then, the answer should be clear. No, Your Honor. What? Why not, Mr. Wright? This could be your only chance to prove your case. You can't prove she didn't wash that scarf. That would be because there's no way that the scarf has any paint left on it. And how are you so sure of that? Because last night, at the time of the murder, it was raining outside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even though you were completely unaware of the fluorescent paint that night, that doesn't matter in the slightest. Any traces of paint that remained on your hooves or your scarf would have undoubtedly been washed away by the rain as you made your way back home. You insolent human! Order! Order! Witness! Restrain yourself! Shut up! Oh, are you gonna intimidate the judge again? This is between me and that no, it's not. Over there. Of course, ma'am. God, this judge. Hey, thanks for nothing. This judge is killing me. So, human, since you refuse to let me try and prove my own innocence, how about you show some evidence that proves my guilt? Your guilt? Everything you've said so far is all based on circumstantial evidence. The so where are the accusations against Coco? You wove in a fascinating yarn, but can you prove it to be true? He's right. Can you prove anything you've said about Coco in the last part of the trial to be true? 
But that's about to change very soon. If, you can't if this is conjecture, then what you said about Coco is too, and that's reasonable doubt for a, for an acquittal. Okay. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have anything that conclusively proves that this witness was the one who killed overall concept and then framed the defendant as an act of revenge? This is it, the final piece of the puzzle. If I can't prove Suri's guilt now, the trial will have to resume tomorrow. Who knows what that could mean for us. Do you know what we can use now, Phoenix? I don't think any of the evidence is conclusive enough to show that Suri had anything to do with the murder or the framing. Perhaps not right now, but we may just see it in a moment. <sighs> it's just not conclusive Suri enough for Coco either. Made a mistake that night. She got her hooves covered in fluorescent paint. Then, whatever she touched also got contaminated in that paint. And unfortunately for her, she just had to go the extra mile when framing Coco for the crime. Oh, I see now. All that's left is to see if we can make it stick. I won't ask again, Mr. Wright. Present your evidence now, if you have- Why aren't you so stern with the witness, Judge? This is the real guilty party behind this crime. He's got nothing. He can't have anything. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Miss Polymer. I do have the evidence that proves that you were the guilty party, and it's right here. Take that! Isn't that the fabric roll? Yeah. <laughs> what in Equestria does that prove? There's nothing on there to suggest that I even touched it. We're looking at it normally. You're right. However, we've yet to Yeah, we haven't used the uh, light on it yet. Completely. Your Honor, with your permission, I would like to perform one last It's going to have a uh, flashlight. Once fluorescent I paint on it. Roll, we'll see once and for all who really killed overall concept. But what? No. no! But then anybody could have Mr. Wright, I'm afraid I don't understand. How would any traces found on that fabric roll prove who killed the victim? Because Suri's the only one that had the paint on her when feet? When we adjourned for recess earlier, Coco told me she had regained some of her memories. Oh? And what did she remember? Unfortunately, she couldn't remember exactly what had happened on the catwalk, but she did remember everything after she awoke from being knocked out. This fabric roll was resting in her hooves. Hooves, which had suddenly become covered in glitter, despite the fact she had just washed them. The fabric roll was in her hooves? If she is to be believed, then this means someone must have placed it there. And there's only one pony who could have done that. <sighs> Miss Polomer, I'm going to run this flashlight over this fabric roll. If we find your hoof prints on there, left clearly by the paint your hooves were covered in, then I would say this whole case is solved. Uh, no! And do those oh, hoof prints match? There they are! Quick! Someone analyze them! Oh yeah, if those are hoof, her hoof prints, then yeah. 30 minutes later. Prince Blue Blood? Are the results back yet? Did they just like hang out yes, for 30 minutes? Your Honor. And what do they show? The, the hoof prints found on the fabric roll match those of Suri Polomer. It's over, Suri. Now that we know you're responsible for framing Coco, that would naturally mean you were also the one who killed overall concept. Uh, mm. Now they kind of so, got her backed into a. Kind of got her backed her into a corner there. Because there's nobody else that could have touched that roll. Let me guess. She's gonna somehow. <laughs> she's gonna somehow become a super villain, right? We finally come to the conclusion of this trial. I agree, Your Honor. We definitely have to find Coco not guilty. 
Miss Polo Bear was the only other pony at the scene of the murder, and all the evidence points to her. Her motive was to steal a roll of the victim's fabric for the contest she was participating in, and she was caught in the process of stealing it and retaliated against her pursuers. After they were both knocked unconscious, she hung over our concept in an effort to get revenge on her former pupil. Yes, Your Honor. Everything lines up, and all the facts are in place. Indeed. That's nuts. I see no room for doubt. You did it, Phoenix! You won! All's well that ends well. No, no! I can't lose! N not to this hairless buffoon! It's not about you, dude. You and this you're kind of being the buffoon. There's nowhere else to go from here. There's a lot of time left. Okay. No, 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 no. I didn't do it. You have to believe me. Please. Somebody help me. Now then, I believe it is time I hand down my verdict. The court finds the defendant, Coco Pamel, not guilty, or are we going to have a... Yeah, it took way too long. Please hold on for a second. Coco? Huh? Miss Pomel? What are you doing? I was about to hand down your verdict. Wait! There's something I need to tell you. It's important. Something important? What is it, Miss Pomel? I have an objection to the defense's last statement. What? 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 Okay. Order! Order in the court! Defendant, what is the meaning of this? I... I remember. I remember everything! Remember? Wait, Coco, you regained all your memory? Yes! All of it! What do you okay. mean by all of it? I can tell you in full detail about the chase! Even what happened on the catwalk! It doesn't matter! Well, don't just stand there looking adorable! <laughs> it doesn't matter! Tell the court what you mean! This should be, this should be testimony in Suri's trial! of this court. Pomo, you stay out of this. This doesn't involve you anymore. But you're going to be arrested for murder if I don't do something. Why do you care? You hate my guts. If anything, you should be thrilled about this. But I'm not. I can't just sit by and watch this happen. If I don't say anything, you're going to get sent to the moon. Poor Tartarus. It's what I deserve for getting myself into trouble all the time. No, you don't! You keep saying that it's every pony for themselves, but that's just not true. I've learned from a great friend that you should always show generosity to others, even if they may not deserve it. So I'm going to help you, whether you want me to or not. So my initial suspicion I was true, was it? Why you're doing this? What matters is what this means. Is this you confessing to your crime? No. Defendant? Not at all. If it's all right. There was either a fourth party or it was an accident. Coco, what else is there left to be said? It's been proven that Miss Bullamere was behind this. I understand how you must feel, but... Please, Mr. Wright, I have to do this. I have to save her. It I... was... I trust her. She would never kill any pony. And you trust me, right? You told me so. So please... Let me testify. Let me tell you what really happened that night. All right, Coco. 
Really? If you're that certain of your own testimony, then I trust you. Your Honor. Y yes Please allow my client to testify. From it, we should be able to find the real truth of this case. Should've let her, should've let him call you not guilty. You could have made this testimony at Surrey's trial and gotten her off the hook. Miss Pommel, please testify about what you witnessed at the night of the murder. Thank you, Your Honor. And you too, Mr. Wright. Although, getting arrested would have definitely screwed up her. Waters now. The only thing I really know is that whatever it is Coco has to say will lead us to the truth. I guess getting arrested for murder, though, would screw up her chances of competing. So, I mean, there's that. I was returning from the restroom after washing my hooves with the paint and glitter. I suddenly saw Overall running up to the catwalk, and then I quickly followed him. While running up the stairs, I heard a loud bang from above. When I reached the top of the catwalk, I saw Surrey looking over the edge with a special fabric in her mouth. I ran to her to ask where Overall was, but then she slapped the ball in my head, and I was knocked out! When I came to, I looked down from the catwalk and saw Overall hanging with a rope tied around his neck. Before I could even scream, Surrey found me, and I just stood where I was until the police came. That seems to be quite consistent with what the defense has already uncovered. Right? Yes, but if you'll let me explain further... Objection! Why are we continuing with this charade? Is this your handiwork, dirty human? Did you set this up just to rub my defeat in Dude, my face? Dude, get out of this. You're not... Of course not. You're not even it's in this our anymore. Duty as keepers of the law to find the truth. The whole truth. If all you care about are your own personal victories, right. then I suggest you find a different occupation. Yeah, you, you little blue curtain, you dare disrespect me. Yeah, me, and and what of it? Prince Blue Blood, nephew to Princess Celestia. Her no one cares, dude. I don't care who you are. I'm here to find the truth. And you suck so bad that Celestia didn't even give you any honors. What you're gonna get with these trials is how to severely damage your There are three members system. of royalty who have less relation to Celestia than you do. Mr. Wright, please and they have higher they have higher obligations. Like you're just there. That's gotta say something. Returning from the restroom after washing my hooves with the paint and glitter. Hold it! Are you certain that you were able to wash everything off? Yes, I did. I knew that I was dealing with fluorescent paint, so I had to be thorough with my washing. Clearly you don't have to be that I thorough if rain is enough to wash it off. To see if I got everything off. Is it that difficult to wash off? As long as it's still wet, it's manageable. It's not as easy when it's dry, though. That's why I had to wash my hooves immediately. So, right. why didn't Overall have any paint on his hooves? He was working with you, right? Yeah, but he was mostly just showing me how to properly paint the fabric, so he barely touched the stuff. I see. You also said that you were returning to the dressing room. Anything in particular that seemed off while heading back? Well, something like that. See, Suri never struck me as somebody who would murder. She didn't seem violent. Did you see anyone else before you? There's either a fourth party. I only saw him, or at least. Or it was an accident. He was. He hurt himself. What do you mean by that? While I was on my way back, I was listening to the play. I was really happy with how great the actors were doing, and it sounded like their best performance yet. I only noticed that something was wrong when I heard loud hoofsteps, and that was when I looked ahead towards the dressing room. I only saw Overall sprinting out of the dressing room for a split second. Did you see which direction he was running to? Okay, so Suri he did see like he was heading Coco the stage. back there. I even called his name, hoping he would respond, but he didn't I say thought... anything. I was really worried. And that's when you started running after him? Yes, I had to find out what the problem was. When I next caught sight of him, I saw that he was near the top of the stairs to the catwalk. I was afraid he would trip because it was so dark, so I turned on the safety lights to make sure he was safe. Right. She said that earlier. 
and that's why the safety lights were turned on during the crime. So, when you ran up the stairs to the catwalk, was there anything that you saw that struck you as strange? It's not exactly what I saw that caught my attention. It's what I heard. What did you hear, defendant? While running up the stairs, I heard a loud clang from above. Hold it! How loud exactly would you say it was? Pretty loud, actually. I'm sure that the others who were near the stage would have heard it, too. That's right. Playwright said he heard the same thing in his testimony. I thought Miss Pilbermeyer knocked out the victim with the railing. Could it have been something else? She also mentioned it in her testimony, after all. How did you react to the noise? It scared me! It made me even more worried for overall! I had to see what was going on up there! What did you see when you got to the top? When I reached the top of the catwalk, I saw Suri looking over the edge with a special fabric in her mouth. Hold it! You saw Miss Polomare? I recognized her the instant I saw her. I never thought I would ever see her again after quitting as her assistant. Do you recall her reaction to seeing So... She looked very shocked. In fact, she looked just as shocked to see me as she did when she was staring over the edge of the catwalk. Why did Suri say that she was invited there? No. By Coco. It was a rolled up fabric. I didn't see anything else. What about her scarf? Because Coco's testimony is. I did, and it was securely wrapped around her neck. There's no way she could have taken it off and put it back on so quickly. I'm sure of it. And just to confirm, the special fabric was rolled up and used to knock you unconscious. Yes, it was rolled up. This has already been established. You're just poking holes into your own theory now. Well, yeah, that's kind of what we're doing here. And what about overall? Where was he? Well, well, pretty much unraveling what we've already anywhere. wrapped up. What do you mean? When I got to the top of the catwalk, all I saw was Siri. Overall was nowhere to be seen. What? <laughs> Miss Pomel! Are you suggesting that Overall just disappeared? I don't know. I was confused too. But that's what I saw. He wasn't on the catwalk at all. Well, this throws a wrench into my theory. If Overall wasn't on the catwalk by the time Coco made it up there, that could only mean... There was either a fourth party or he... ...that the victim had already been hanged by the time he got up there, do you? Um, now that you mention it... I did hear the crowd panicking when I got to the top. But how could he have... I'm sure whatever Suri saw gave her that expression when she looked down. It's possible. She was looking at the body. What? But how was that possible? <laughs> Prince Blue Blood, what's so funny? <laughs> Isn't it obvious, Your Honor? The defense has managed to disprove his own theory with his client's testimony. He... he has? Go on, filthy human. Say it. Admit that according to Miss Pomel's testimony, Miss Polymer cannot possibly be the killer, and as a result, the only other one it could be is the defendant. Well, Mr. Wright, is that true? Do you well, have nothing left to support your own theory? If, uh... Hmm. Watch, Your Honor. The attorney there will clearly opt to strike all of the defendant's testimony from the record. Please, Mr. Wright! You have to believe me! I know we're in the case you built, but it's all true! I swear! Well, if he was already off the catwalk by the time Sir, uh, Coco got up there, that would take her out of the... We have this testimony discarded and go straight for a not guilty verdict. Coco risks everything to bring this information to light. She must really believe that Miss Polomare is innocent. It's just Again, that the testimony she's provided. It's so just far, that Suri should have her own trial. Seems to be the case. She's trusting me to save some pony she cares about, and I'm not about to betray that trust. Your Honor, the defense will not have the defendant's testimony stricken from the record. You, you won't. That means... Yes. We're accepting the defendant's testimony as true. Oh, 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Then, does that mean you have evidence to prove how Miss Polomare could have committed the crime under these new circumstances? No, Your Honor. We do not. Are we gonna... What? But wasn't she your prime suspect for the theft and the framing and the murder? I do still believe that she stole the fabric and framed Coco. However, I am certain, based on Coco's testimony, that she was not the one who killed overall concept. I see. And what, pray tell, do you think can prove your point? After all, there's nothing to suggest that the defendant is even telling the truth here, is there? What's your- Think about showing your hand. Blue Blood's clearly baiting me into presenting this evidence. He knows what it will prove if I do. But there's no way to go but forward. My only hope now lies with her. Alright, sorry. Your Honor, the defense would like to present a piece of evidence at this time. Evidence that will reveal the truth behind this incident once and for all. Are you sure about this, Mr. Wright? Absolutely, Your Honor. Take that! It's just... Isn't that a noose used in the crime? Like... <laughs> Earlier, we determined that... Are, are we gonna say that it was an accident? ...by finding traces of fluorescent paint on it. Now, what do you suppose we'll find if we examine this with a forensics flashlight? Well, if she's the culprit, I'd imagine there'd be traces of paint on the rope. And if there isn't then that would mean that she's innocent of this murder, correct? Yes, I suppose so. But do you know what you're doing, Mr. Wright? I couldn't be more certain, Your Honor. Very well. Then please, test the rope for forensic... Yeah, if you take Suri away as, an, as a... If you take Suri away as a suspect, then you're back where you started. There's glitter. There's... There's no paint! There's no paint on the rope! <laughs> Foolish attorney! You've fallen right into my trap! Really? Prince Blue Blood <laughs> you actually you set mean? that trap, did you? Your Honor, as we've all seen, this rope has no fluorescent paint on it. Which means that Miss Polomare cannot be the killer. In which case, the only other clue left as to the identity of the killer are the traces that were found on the rope. The other traces? Yeah, it has glitter. If you recall, Your Honor, this rope had traces of glitter found around the noose. Oh, that's right! This must mean that someone who had glitter-covered hooves must have been the one to wrap the noose around the victim's neck. There were only two ponies who had the opportunity to do that after the victim was knocked out, and both of them would have had glitter on their hooves. Miss Pomel and Miss Polomare. However, now that we know that there was no paint on the rope, that, that rules the witness yeah. leaving the defendant as the only possible suspect. Yeah, it does. Oh, that's right. What? No, it, it wasn't me. Silence, you criminal. It's impossible for you to escape your punishment. Yeah, now. you should have let him hand it's down a right guilty defense. verdict. Use the fabric roll to knock the victim out. There's no way she could be the killer. Objection! Just because she couldn't have knocked the victim out doesn't mean she can't be the killer. W why not? Have you already forgotten what your spiky headed friend has already demonstrated? That Miss Polomare here was the one who knocked the victim unconscious by throwing him against the catwalk railing using her scarf. Yeah, how did he get the noose around his neck? After incapacitating the victim, likely because she was trying to stop him from catching her after stealing the fabric, Miss Pamel showed up on the scene and proceeded to hang the victim. Why? Objection! But uh, Coco had cleaned off all the glitter on her hooves before going up the catwalk. Sorry even testified that Coco had gone to do yeah, so. Yes, she had. Objection! 
However, she has not confirmed that the defendant did, in fact, have clean hooves when she arrived on the scene. What? What? It's the end of the line for you, defense. Am I wrong, Mr. Wright? All right. Everything is going according to plan. Even though it's now clear who killed the victim, I think it's time we remove the last traces of doubt from the court's mind. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have anything that can refute the prosecution's claim? I don't, Your Honor, but someone here does. And who would that be, Mr. Wright? Isn't it obvious? The one pony who can testify for certain exactly when Coco's hooves were covered in glitter. Suri Pullomer! What? You honestly think she's going to testify for you now? What a joke. You just accused her of a murder she never even committed. Why, in Equestria, do you think she would want to help you? Because Coco just helped her. Suri, you've always believed that it's every pony for themselves in the big city. And she's right. going to have to... And yet, as we've just seen, Coco put her own life on the line to protect you. She saved you from being charged with a murder you didn't commit. Now, it's your turn to save her. My turn? Yes, if you confess to everything you did that night, and everything you saw, it will prove Coco's innocence beyond all doubt. Confess. I've done everything I can to help Coco. And your testimony, your confession, is the last piece I need to completely prove her innocence. However, you must tell the truth this time. We aren't going to get another shot at this. Please, Suri. I... trust you. You'll do the right thing. I know it! You? What? You lost me? I do. Enough of this. I just don't no. understand. The game is up, attorney. She is not going to testify for Shut up, I dude. Can't. God. I Damn. Can't. What? What are you confessing to, witness? I She was confess. trying to steal the fabric. To stealing the fabric and attacking Coco. Attack, yeah. You You're admitting that it was you? Witness. Silence yourself. You're going to ruin my You're son. what? I don't care about your case, okay? I'm going to tell the whole truth of that night, whether you want me like, to or Jesus, not. Jesus, blue blood, nobody, like, Will nobody gives a shit about you. Respect I deserve. I am Prince Blue Blood, nephew of... No one this. cares. Don't you realize that these are not minor offenses you are confessing No, but they're not murder. I am well aware, Your Honor. But I refuse to just stand well, by and let Coco take the blame for this murder. Sorry! <laughs> Don't misunderstand me. I've not been moved by your sentimental pleas for help. I just... I don't want to have to owe you or that attorney any favors in the future. Or feel like you do. Of course. Hey, you know what? Well then, witness, please proceed with I'd, your confession. I'd take that. That night, I went to the theater of my own volition. But see, I was she's still going to have to be... As Mr. Wright predicted, and yes, I attacked Coco. She's still process. going to have to be taken in for a, the for theft and assault. Known to Coco Basically and armed robbery. And those whom they told. How did you come by this knowledge? I can't say. Why not? Look, I just can't, Okay. Don't ask about it anymore, or I will be withdrawing my confession. Very well. Can you do Although that? I can't help but be curious. So, what exactly happened after you entered the theater? I went to the theater through the back door, just like you said, and made my way to the dressing room. There were two ponies in there, Coco and Overall. I kept my eyes on the room and the surrounding area, waiting for an opportunity to take the fabric. After Coco left the room, I hid behind a curtain so that I would not be seen. Overall was still in there, but I figured this would be the best chance I had to steal the fabric. 
I waited until his back was turned and then entered the room. I quietly picked up a wooden roll that was sitting on the table and began rolling up the fabric that had been left out. I see. But to actually manage to sneak in and roll up the fabric, something else must have captured Overall's attention. Something to keep him occupied long enough to allow mm -hmm. for Suri to do what she did. I doubt she would have been successful otherwise. But what could it have been? So, what happened next? I managed to roll the fabric up unnoticed. But Overall noticed me as I was leaving and he started chasing me. I bolted for the back door, but I noticed Coco Palmel coming back to the dressing room. Before she had a chance to see me, I went straight for the catwalk, hoping that Overall would be slow climbing up so that I could escape. The lights came on as I turned the corner, but I paid them no mind and kept running. As soon as I reached the end of the catwalk, I heard a loud crying behind me. And when I looked back, Overall was just... That lines up with what Coco said. But he was just chasing you. How could he have just disappeared like that? I was just as lost as you are. I was happy that he wasn't chasing me anymore, but that noise worried me. So I went back to see what had happened. I started hearing screams of terror from the audience. With my worries growing, I looked down and what I saw was Overall's body hanging Eesh. from the catwalk. What in the... what? Order! Order, I say! Witness, are you saying that the victim was hanged during your chase? It sounds crazy, I know, but that's what I saw. I was about to run for the back door before the police had a chance to arrive, but... How could it be an accident? I was looking down at the body... Coco had come up on the catwalk as well. And it would have looked like I you did it. I was freaking out. She was wondering where Overall was, and she started moving towards me. I, I didn't know what to do. And I was too afraid of being caught stealing his fabric and possibly being seen as a killer. So I took the fabric roll and I swung it as hard as I could on Coco's head and knocked her out. This... this cannot be... It was at that point that a certain thought occurred to me. I can, I can use this. I can frame her, get back at her for everything. What? So you really right. were trying to plant the whole thing on the defendant? Coco and that pressy unicorn rarity. They both ruined Those are. Those are really serious in crimes in their own I right. Humiliated. I wanted payback. So I removed the fabric from the roll as I was still intending on... This is almost as bad as being found fabric, guilty of murder. Accidentally tore a piece of it off in the process. H how did you do that? I think the answer to that question would be because of the exposed splinter on the fabric roll. Correct? You got it. A bit of the fabric got caught on a splinter and tore off as I unwrapped it. I tried to catch it before it fell, but it was too late. Luckily, it went unnoticed thanks to the panic as a result of the hanged body. Once I had the fabric off the roll, I shook off some of the glitter onto Coco's hooves and placed the fabric roll itself between them. That would explain why the glitter left on the catwalk was in a pile. You quickly dropped it in one place instead of wasting precious time by spreading it about. The glitter on the That's rope right. could have been... After I had covered both just... Coco's hooves and the fabric roll in glitter, I placed the roll in Coco's hooves to complete the picture that Coco had attacked and hung the victim. Finally, I fled down the left side of the catwalk and left the building. Leaving a trail of footprints and fluorescent paint behind you for us to find. I didn't even know that paint was on the fabric in the first place. I only found out when it was brought up during this trial. I didn't really right. pay attention to what Coco and Ovra were working on in the dressing room, and the lights were on when I stopped running on the catwalk. I was completely unaware I had left any prints. Even after I got home, I wasn't aware of the paint. The rain must have washed it off my hooves and the fabric. And this is the 
full truth this time, right? Witness? <laughs> right. Yes. Every last thing I saw. It took four tries, but we finally got the truth out of her. Let's see. Robbery, trespassing, assault, perjury in court. <laughs> These are... These are enough to get her locked up for a long time without without murder. So there, Mr. Wright, you have my confession. I stole the fabric, attacked Coco, and framed her for murder. Now the ball's in your court to save her. Very well. Well, you just... Thank you for your cooperation. You, you just there. saved her. <laughs> Don't lose any sleep over it. As much as I hate to be the bearer of bad news to you all, this proves nothing. The defendant is still the only one who could have committed the crime. If there was a crime. Objection! If there was a murder. Then you must not have been listening to the confession at all, Prince Blue Blood. If you had been, it should be clear that there's no yeah, way Coco was Yeah, because Suri said that this. Overall was already hanged before Explain Coco got back up. Were you not listening? According to the confession that was just given, not only was Coco not even on the catwalk when the victim was hanged, but Miss Polar Mare herself admitted just now that it was she who covered the right? defendant's hooves in glitter. I mean, Jesus. No. And since that's the case, then it's impossible for Coco to have been the one to leave the traces of glitter on the noose. That in conjunction with her exact whereabouts at the exact time of the murder should prove beyond any doubt that she's innocent. That Coco Pommel is innocent. No. They're they're both innocent. So, was there even a murder? Order! Order in the court! And if, if there Mr. wasn't a murder, you how did... This is impossible! Human, if neither pony could have murdered overall, then who are you proposing is the true culprit? That's not what we're here to find! What else on that catwalk could have done it? Are you certain about that? That's not what we're here to find. We're here to prove... We're here to getting someone? acquit. One other pony that was on the catwalk at the time of the crime. No. Overall that himself? Can't be serious. Mr. Wright, are you suggesting? You suggesting as though an accident? Arrived at the truth. As much as I don't want to Or a suicide? You, or even fully understand why. This is the only possibility left. Are we suggesting a suicide? Honor. Phoenix, you weren't going to... The one responsible for taking the victim's life was the only other pony who was at the crime scene when he was hanged. And that, of course, would be the victim himself. Overall concept! What the... Hello? You must be suggesting a suicide because there's no way he could have accidentally got the noose around his neck. He had the glitter on his hoofs, right? Have you completely lost your mind? Are you suggesting that the victim committed suicide? That's what he's suggesting. That's exactly what I'm suggesting. Objection! That fast? Are you crazy? There is nothing in the evidence or testimony that suggests suicide. I have to agree here, Phoenix. Murder is already rare enough in Equestria, but suicide? That's entirely unheard of! As far as we know, anyway. As much. But despite how improbable it may be, it's the only logical conclusion I can think of that can solve this <sighs> But case. you don't have to solve the case, you just have to prove... You, you just have to prove Coco not guilty, logical. and you've done that! You have a good explanation for this, human! You don't even have to do this! I can't claim to know why the victim would do this. I can't hazard a guess to what happened that night. Overall concept after chasing Miss Polomer up to the catwalk, grab the rope that was prepared by the stagehoods during intermission. Wrapping it around his neck, he jumped over the railing to his death. We've heard testimonies from both defendant and witness. And together, they prove rather conclusively that Overall was the only other one on the catwalk at the time of the crime. If neither of them could have done it, then it could have only been the victim himself. Objection! Your delusions have utterly ruined what your are you talking about delusions to bring you back to reality the victim was unconscious 
due to a blow to the head at the time of his death. <laughs> meant to believe that he could That's have true. Him, I forgot about was that. Unconscious? Of course not. Though we may have made an incorrect assumption regarding this blow to the head. He could have hit it up his head on the way down, I guess. We all came to the conclusion that the victim was unconscious because he was knocked out by someone. But that's where we were wrong. It wasn't because he was attacked. He was knocked unconscious after hitting his head against something as he was falling. What? What could the victim have even hit his head on? The railing? Might I suggest he hit the back of his head on the catwalk railing? He must have not jumped far enough and received a pretty nasty bruise as a result, which knocked him unconscious. How outrageous! And I suppose you have something to support that claim? You don't need it! The claim that Suri, Coco, and Playwright heard. It was the sound of the victim's head colliding with the railing. You don't need it! You've already proven that she's innocent! Objection! You can't be serious, human! This theory of suicide. This isn't even part of the trial. I demand to see real physical evidence. The last 40 minutes of this has been completely unnecessary. I have it right here. Take that! The autopsy report doesn't prove anything. Right here, where it says the victim had traces of glitter on his forehooves. So what? That doesn't Yeah, well, yeah, it kind of does. If he had glitter on his hooves, he could have, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just put the noose around his neck. He's finally realized the truth, Your Honor. As we've established, there are traces of glitter around the noose. The two ponies who are most likely to have left glitter on it could not have done so. The lack of fluorescent paint clears Miss Polymer, and the noose had already been thrown off the catwalk by the time the defendant arrived. Not to mention, Miss Polymer admitted that she was the one who coated Coco's hooves in glitter after the victim died. Therefore, there was only one other pony who could have left glitter on the noose. The only other pony who had traces of glitter on his hooves and went up the catwalk at the time Dude, this is nuts. of the crime. Overall concept! This is nuts. Objection! You haven't won yet. You still haven't explained why the victim would- He doesn't have to! He was Jesus Christ! And was even planning he doesn't to have to! Defendant. And on top of all of that, if he was planning on committing suicide, why do it in the middle of a play in front of thousands of ponies in the audience? You don't have to prove that. You don't have an answer, do you? He doesn't need one. You're right. I don't have an answer why the victim decided to commit suicide. That's not Thank you. To be determined here and now. Thank you. We don't need it. The purpose of this trial was to ascertain whether or not the defendant, Coco Pommel, was guilty of the murder of overall concept. Through the testimony Thank and you. evidence that's been presented, I'd say the answer to that question has been made abundantly clear by now. As for why the victim chose to end his own life, I'd say that's up to the police to investigate and discover the truth behind Finally. the Finally! As much as I share everyone else's confusion, I have to agree with the defense. What? You're actually going along with What are you talking about, dude? There's simply no other explanation, I'm afraid. I would like to request that the police continue their investigation in order to uncover further information regarding this supposed suicide. As for Suri Polomare, you will be placed under arrest for perjury, theft, and tampering with the crime scene. Not to mention assault. Whatever. It sure beats getting sent to the moon. Just to make sure that sentence isn't too long. I have justice to work on, okay? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a little bit too long for that, I'm afraid. Well, Mr. Wright, even in another world, you haven't lost your knack for taking a seemingly ordinary murder case and turning it onto its head. Oh, man, this has worn me out. This third part has worn me out. Uh, thanks, Your Honor. I can't tell if he's complimenting me or calling me out. Still, sometimes I wish you would stop for a moment. I'm an old man. 
I don't know how much more of this my heart can take. Well, you should be talking to Twilight yes. for that uh, because uh, sorry, Your Honor. if it hadn't been for her, there would be a out. equestrian presiding so judge. Right now, I think it's time I hand down my verdict in the case of Miss Pamel. Oh, no, 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 no! How can I lose? How can I lose to this fearless ape? A perfect win streak! How do you have a perfect win streak? How do you have a perfect win streak? You are so incompetent. You, won. you don't even know what you're doing. And what a bumpy ride this trial was. In the case of Miss Coco Pamel. <laughs> Blue Blood I doesn't even know what he's doing. It's about damn time. I like how Blue Blood looks all happy over there whenever they show the courtroom from the full, you know, the full view. Dude, fire him. Seriously. For the love of God, fire him. Court is now adjourned. Okay. Well, that was a long day. I don't know why I just assumed that I assumed that this was uh, the third Whoa. day, but it's not. Now that was an ending I certainly didn't expect. But you still managed to pull through. Congrats, boss. And you too, Twilight. Yes! Thank you so much, Phoenix. You saved Coco. All in a day's you work. You did do rarely. that. Oh, that yeah, it was actually two days' work, again. but, you know. But of course, just to have any doubt. <laughs> I completely uh, forgot about her see. again. There's no need to shower me with praise, honestly. But it's true. In fact, I forgot about all three of them. I forgot they were all. I forgot any of them were there. You sure taught that prince not to underestimate you in there. It was so satisfying seeing him fall apart, especially after going after my dear Coco. Oh, here she comes now. I guess we've uh, made amends with uh, Siri at this point. Hello there, Coco. Congrats on getting your acquittal, dear. Thank you, Rarity. I'm very glad. Don't ask why she's sad. Oh, then why the long face, darling? Oh, I don't know. Well, Maybe because her... I'm off the hook. <laughs> yeah. I'm so sad about overall passing away. Especially now that I know how he really died. Is it my, my, my oh, lover died and... Himself. Was something hurting him? <laughs> and it's suicide, no, no less, right? Miss yeah. Pamel? Yes. I've studied analytical psychology, so I want to give you my opinion. You are absolutely not responsible for what happened to Overall. But you can't know that. You mentioned earlier no one in the can, trial but that Overall I don't had a bad see how it could be following the death of his parents, right? Well, yes. But that was years ago, and he never seemed upset once we started living together. It's not uncommon for someone to have periods of depression separated by years where they feel and act perfectly normal. Still, that seemed pretty, uh... I think overall may have been suffering from it without anyone realizing. Granted, we can't know for sure. I guess that's true, but... but... That's what I think, anyway. Even still, he probably wasn't happy with me. I can see where she would feel that, that way. Could it be farther from the truth, Coco? Remember this ring Overall was going to propose to you with? He clearly was at his happiest when he was with you. It's true, we may not Where would know you put that ring? For ending his own life, but I know <laughs> that you were not the reason. <laughs> where where would you put that ring? Maybe you should talk to him more. Probably been more involved in his designs. If only you didn't leave the dressing room, he would have stayed alive. If only yeah, I this o this opens up a massive can of worms. I, uh -huh. We didn't we didn't Take need this. Finger. You'll hurt your vocal cords yelling like that. We didn't need this. Th none of that. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Listen, you shouldn't blame yourself. He was for happy with Coco. Death. He was gonna there propose to her. He had a ring. But Why would he buy a ring if he was gonna he kill himself? Time, and he but it happened anyway. <laughs> I understand what you're going through. You thought you could have done something to prevent losing a loved one, but the entire situation was beyond your control. You shouldn't put the burden on yourself. You'll never be able to live in the present if you stay in the past. I guess that's Besides, true, but... In some way, your friend still lives on. What do you mean? He may be gone, 
but his spirit isn't. He was a teacher to you, right? If you learned from him, you're allowing his techniques to live on as well. So in some way, he's always with you. Of course. This raises oh, so many questions. And I know you've learned so It, it makes so me. little sense. Now it's up to you to carry on his legacy. It would have made more sense Even for there to be a murderer. Soon. Really I would have. Know you'll make sure he is never Even if it didn't have to be Surrey, it would be Thank make way more friend. sense for there to be a murderer. And, uh, what are your names? Or that he just I'm accidentally Apollo. tripped and Apollo fell over Justice. the catwalk without the rope. That would make and a lot I'm more sense. Somebody still could have been a, accused of pushing him over the railing so without the rope, and he would have definitely died at the in, on the stage. Then you'd let yourself believe. I mean, first of all, if he was going to kill himself, why would he buy a ring for Coco? That you were the one who killed overall. Second of all, I was the only one up there after all. I know, but this human proved. If he was going to kill himself, Coco, I know you think you may not reach overall. Why would he do it so rushed? He did it after you somebody fought. stole... You were under his wing. He was all. in the middle of a chase. Suri had just Sir, stolen his roll of fabric. And he responded to, to her taking the roll of fabric and went after her. Why did he just decide, oh, Isn't hey, look, there's, a, there's that rope. Why don't I just, uh, you know, well, nice real quick, believe that before anybody notices... The sacrifices you make to get there are always If you were going to kill yourself, it would be premeditated, fact, wouldn't it? It would be it may have been partially something that you planned on doing. His own life. What? Why? I was so obsessed with making my plays perfect that I never realized how I've often mistreated my staff members. Wait, are you going to blame Without yourself doubt, for... This applies to both you and overall. I was a terrible I'm, I'm talking before I'm listening to everything, so, but it, I don't know if it even matters instead anymore. Of striving for perfection, I will do my best to achieve something greater that all you're just, can be You're just proud. both blaming yourselves for, just for me and you, overall doing it. But, but the okay, of the third of all, well. third of all, if he was going to kill himself, wouldn't he do it in a place where it was obvious that it was a suicide? Because even in doing own. it there, in fact, when he came with Coco chasing him up the catwalk, the he, wanted to it, talk to he had to have known that that would make for the show it look like a murder. He said that it was time that your own work became known and that this was a perfect so opportunity. So why would you... At the time... Not only I would you do I it so hastily, time, right in the middle of chasing someone after your fabric, his request. And you don't know... However, that's all changed now. In honor of Overall's last wish to me, I hereby promote you, Miss Palmel, the head costume designer for Broadway Theater. Okay. I mean, it makes no... I mean, it, it only makes sense. I will do my best to make sure that my designs will be the best they can be. I'm sure you will. That twinkle in your eye. I mean, clearly really she's the one that's been designing a lot of winning stuff Come already. On, let's so. get back to the theater. I want to make sure the staff knows you are all right. Of course, sir. We still need to make some costumes for the next play anyway. And I certainly will have my own ideas to implement. That's the spirit, darling. And once you do design some of your own clothes, I'd be happy to sell them in my store for you. I could even use some of overall special fabric as inspiration for my next clothing line. If you'll allow me to have some. Of course, Rarity. Anything for a dear friend. Well, see you later, every pony. Okay. And there they go. Okay. What's wrong, Twilight? Despite me getting oh, mad at the way that ended, it's, I, it's nothing. I'm, I still enjoyed I'm just it. Glad to see Coco so happy. I know, right? I can it's still been very entertaining. Coming from her. I'll, I'll, Playwright did a great you know, job. Don't get me wrong. I don't feel like I'm. I don't feel like I'm wasting my time. It's just. I must confess, I it's just there's so many things about it. There's so many things really? about the way that ended that... You see, 
Playwright hasn't always been in the best of moods. At least whenever I visited the theater. Well, he did say that he's always been striving for perfection. I can only imagine the emotional stress he puts himself in day in, day out. It did. His never-ending desire to achieve perfection made him so stubborn and short-tempered. And it put the staff under a lot of stress. I was hmm. very upset with how unfairly he treated every pony. Being the element of generosity, I can understand why that would upset you. But ah, now you're kind of you're kind of blaming he him. Considered the well-being of others. He was only ever remotely happy when he thought he was close to perfection. I've never seen him show this much sympathy for anybody else. Showing sympathy to others is an easy way to let them know that we care about what happens to them. Bringing negative emotions to your peers will only spread more negativity, and that leads to an unhealthy environment. This tragedy must have given him that revelation. Oh, yeah, that, like that, that would do it, I would think. And I'm happy that he's changed for the better. And Coco seems to be a lot stronger, too. And I'm so proud of her for that. We'll see. Now she's off to Portugal. That has to... That's all gonna I have to sink in. And what else she has to offer the fashion world. Yep, it seems as if everyone is moving on to bigger and better things. <laughs> Although I... <laughs> Other... A little unsatisfied with the way the trial ended. Yeah, I'm with you, Twilight. Satisfied? What do you mean? Well, there were still some unanswered questions at the end of it all. The most notable one being... Why did Oberon Concept take his own life? Yeah, that makes That's something I can't absolutely no fathom. sense. Overall, I mean, we don't... Happy individual. Well, now somebody can't Even appear happy and... Depression possibly being a factor. His life seemed to only be getting better and better. People can appear and happy and be depressed. Look at Robin Williams. Even some pony he cared enough about to want to propose to but, him. He never seemed like the kind of pony to even consider suicide. Right. That makes me wonder too. But unfortunately, there is no clear answer. Let's hope that the police can investigate further and find out the truth soon. I suppose. But hey, you showed that prissy prince who's boss. I he was so incompetent. His and, face as he smelled defeat. and honestly, the judge yeah, was pretty incompetent, he's quite too. character, isn't he? Oh, that reminds me. Twilight. I but then again, I think we knew what already that... You said that Prince Blue Blood was prosecuting for experience when he can rule a kingdom, correct? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> and as princess, you're able to stand in court as an attorney as well, You would think correct? so. Yes, uh... So, what I'm trying to understand is, why did you feel the need to summon me when you could have been the presiding you could have judge? Whole situation yourself? Huh? I know you're capable of doing it. You saved me quite a few. It times would have been a conflict today. of interest, though, for You've Twilight. Been studying law for a while now, even if this is your first. Because Twilight is a friend of Rarity, who is a friend of Coco Pamel. So, in fact. Didn't you say that ponies who are of loyalty... That would that would give her a conflict of interests as far as being the presiding judge, princess, would it not? Doesn't that technically mean you have an obligation to represent Miss Pommel? Oh, well, I just... When Rarity told me the story, I didn't exactly yeah. have a lot of time to think about who would represent Coco, so I just summoned you. That doesn't really make sense, Twilight. Semini me would have meant you would have had to gone through the trouble of getting an equestrian attorney's badge ready again. Also, the one accused of murder is a friend of your friend. And considering you're the princess of friendship, that's more of a reason to that take on the That makes it a yourself. conflict of interest. You did Doesn't say it? that you've been am I, am I wrong? ever since you became a princess. Can can you I, uh, Can you be somebody's attorney the if you're there if you know them I personally? If you appear so capable of taking on a case, why did you feel the need to summon me? We wouldn't have had a video otherwise. Ooh, the Cyclops coming out. What? Cyclops? What's wrong, Phoenix? N nothing. And five of them. Forget I asked. What does this mean? What is Twilight trying so hard to hide from me? Hmm. Oh. Where in the world Hi. did you come from, Pinky? You ask my parents, Feeny. 
She <laughs> nice. Hey, Pinky. Hey, Trucy. She's uh, oh, hey. random like that. Where were you sitting in the gallery? I didn't see you. I was with Fluttershy and Applejack. So I saw Fluttershy. She wasn't with me, Apollo, or I was Trucy thinking either. that she was. I was thinking uh, I did see Pinky. Yeah. I was late. Maybe not. Yes. This is clearly an important trial to us. I know Rico had some wonderful reserve business to attend to, but how could you possibly be late? But you slept in. Fair enough. That's what I'm gonna do tomorrow. Or today. Again? <laughs> I can't help it. I had one of those really fun dreams and I didn't want them to stop. <laughs> that's so that's not sleep. how sleeping works. Doesn't Pinky. Miss Pony have a day job? How has she not been fired already? Hey, I have a job. I'm in the Chinky Corner helping the cakes make cakes. They and like her. Also, a party extraordinaire. So she kind of parties that will shake your flame. She kind of, you know, With makes her own hours. It takes to party that hard. It makes sense that you sleep also, so long. Also, you promised so them a uh, victory party. Spooky. Don't you remember, Feeny? My congratulations yep. on winning the trial party. You already have that party ready? Of course she does. She's yep, been planning it all day. Sure did. I already got the cakes, the drinks, the gifts, and decorations ready. I even brought a DJ to the party, too. Cakes? <gasps> it's a darn good thing we won, because yes. that case was almost over in the first 30 minutes. And even a DJ? This party is gonna be wild! This sounds like a very stacked party. When did you get everything prepared? I got it prepared as soon as I woke up. Wow, that must have taken forever to prepare. It wasn't hard. You've had two I days. Do this all the time. Wait, hold on a second. I thought you slept in. How did you get the time to prepare a big party like that? She's pinky. Mm, by doing it quickly, silly. So then, when did you wake up? A couple of hours ago. Don't question pinky. Oh, uh, wait. Doesn't it take a couple of hours to get to Manhattan from Ponyville? Uh-huh. But I thought you said you woke up a couple of hours ago. I sure did. But that means the second you woke up... You fully prepared a big party. Um, you've had two days. She's had two days. I'm here. This is the second day. In a matter of minutes? Hey, yep. Sure sounds like it. But... But... <laughs> That's... How were you able to prepare a party that big in such a small span of time? You're questioning I Pinky. I told you, Polly, by doing it quickly. I... Er... What? You're questioning Pinky. <laughs> You'd be amazed at what this poop mare is capable of, Apollo. She just has great work ethic, Polly. You could learn a thing or two from her. Give me a couple hundred clients and maybe I'll... She could have snuck up the catwalk and hanged somebody Plus, in that amount of time. Does this pink pony have time powers? There's no way she's capable of that. <laughs> nah, that's just Pinkie Pie being Pinkie Pie. You better just get used mm -hmm. to it. Well, what does that even mean? Just trust me on this. It's for your own sake. We know you don't watch the show. This isn't testing it enough. Hey, Pinky, if you want, I'd like to have a magic performance at your party. A human doing a magic show? Ooh, that sounds exciting! I've always wanted to see a human do magic! I'm the best magician in the city where I'm from. I can guarantee you all a good show. You and Trixie should do a show together. Sounds like it'll be a wonderful time. I'm certainly looking forward to it. Hopefully, I don't get forced to dance until I throw my back out. Right. Come on, everybody! Let's get to the party! Right behind okay. you, Pinky. So we got and as quickly as it started, the case came to a close. Yeah. Pinky threw a party for all of us to celebrate, and it was actually very enjoyable. Oh, we're not going to get to see it? Like a little vacation, it was a nice change of pace from what I usually do after a trial. What? Go drink? This little moment of sunshine and rainbows wouldn't last forever. Unbeknownst to us, something darker was lurking in the shadows of this colorful world. Something that teased at a broader mystery. Well, yeah. And little did any of us realize that during our carefree celebration, that mystery would continue to unfold not too far from Well, yeah, us. obviously Twilight. It's a mystery I won't soon forget, as it brought me to someone that I thought I would never see again. 
someone who's a spitting image of a dear friend I knew a long time ago. Turnabout Theater. All right. And I'm supposed to stay through the credits, which I would do that anyway. It's just like I do with a movie. That's where I find things to talk about. It's just the end of that. The, the ending of that was confusing. About the, the last, at least the last hour or so. Because there came a point where when, when the judge got ready to hand down that verdict the first time, it should have just let him do it. That's, that's the way that should have gone. Because Suri was going to get she was going to get accused of crimes anyway. And what would have happened was she would have she would have been accused of murder and all the rest of that stuff. And so what would have happened being represented, what would have happened is that they would have gotten her acquitted of murder but con convicted of all the other stuff, which is the way it would have wound up anyway. But she should have had the that should have the deal with Surrey should have been her own separate trial because it we had we had uh, cast enough doubt on Coco Pamel by that point to get the, the not guilty verdict. In fact, um, as, as soon as we you know as soon as we proved a third party at the crime scene, I would say that was pretty close to. That was pretty close to it, but then, you know, Surrey changing her story three times that and committing perjury, that would have, that would have, you could have just about said anything you wanted to about her. Ponyville Prison, Solidarity, is Surrey in prison? I like that there's a Ponyville Prison. If crimes are so rare. Knock, knock. Rise and shine, inmates. Guess what day it is? That's right. As of today, you're a free mayor. It must feel nice to finally be out after eight months, huh? She you're doesn't right. seem very happy. Uh, well, you're lucky that human defense attorney proved that you didn't murder any ponies. You probably would have been banished the mood if you hadn't. As for your possessions, uh, just these. You left them back in the courtroom. Well, this is it. But before you leave, wait. I want to ask you something. Now that you're out, what are you going to do? I'm going to help those that need it. Just like he did for me. Oh. Was that, uh... Okay. Alright. Well, I think I got everything that I meant to say out during the uh, credits and during the, the ending scene. I, I think I probably missed some stuff in that ending scene. But, uh, I still had a lot of fun with it. I mean, I don't... I don't take back anything I said. Okay? There, there, there was just a lot of stuff. This part, this third part, was pretty crazy. It, it, uh, it, it really kind of unraveled here. I like, not unraveled like it wasn't enjoyable. It's just that the way the proceedings went, um, like Surrey should have been found in contempt of court like three times. She changed her story at least three times. So like. That's like lying under oath. So there, there's a try. There's a charge for that too. Uh, it's been so long since I've seen Turnabout Storm. I might have to go back and watch that too, because I think that the the pony that they just let out at the end of that might have had something to do with Turnabout Storm. And it's been about five or six years since I've seen Turnabout Storm. So there's no way I'm gonna remember. As a matter of fact, 
I'm getting a lot of I'm getting uh, Turnabout Storm mixed up with a like a game called My Little Investigations that I actually still have downloaded on this computer that I played through that involved a uh, it involved a, a big jewel being stolen from Rarity's uh, boutique in in Ponyville and Twilight was actually the investigator you were playing as Twilight as the investigator on that and there were a lot of uh, there were a lot of similarities to Ace Attorney um, in that game so um, I think that I'm getting Turnabout Storm mixed up with that in a lot of cases so I'm not sure what happened there and what happened in my little investigations that that might be getting uh, crossed up uh, but I definitely don't remember any specific characters in Turnabout Storm except for Trixie, Rainbow Dash, and I'm pretty sure Scootaloo was in there at some point also. Hmm. But yeah, uh, yeah, Suri should have been, you know, once she became a suspect for murder, she should have probably been taken off the witness stand and booked and then she gets her own trial um, I mean I think it's fine that we proved that she was there at the crime scene because proving that she was there at the crime scene definitely cast enough doubt on Coco to have her uh, not guilty but I think given that what Coco did really didn't make a lot of sense because she basically put herself on trial all over again she could have just as easily um, I could take these off now. She could have just as easily been um, a witness. She could have very well just to, just as easily have testified at Surrey's trial uh, whenever it came up. See, and it's how apparently uh, you can go on trial the next day after being booked for something. Um, and she was going to get accused of all of those. She was going to get charged with those other crimes anyway. So it's not like it's not like Coco was saving her to the point where she could go back and work on her fashion show. That was out the window at that point. So um, there was definitely no need for, for uh, Coco to try to save her for that, for that reason. And as far as saving her from being convicted of murder, um, they could have gotten her off the hook. Um, Coco could have gone up to Phoenix and said, hey, look, you need to represent her too because she didn't commit the murder and here's why. Um, but for it to be a suicide, like I said before, um, that's just crazy. Like that's just that's just a crazy twist that doesn't it just doesn't make a lot of sense given some of the other evidence in the case. When I mean, you had you had him and Coco living together and he was gonna propose to her to the point of buying a ring for her. Why would you buy a ring if you were about to propose to someone and if you were about to kill yourself? Why, why would you buy a ring with the purpose of proposing to someone with it? And telling other people, telling other ponies that you were going to propose. That obviously some people, I keep saying people, I mean ponies, but you know what I mean. Obviously there were people who knew about this because it came up in court. So not only did Rarity know, but some of the other contestants in the fashion show knew also. Um, so that doesn't make a lot of sense why he would do that if he was going to kill himself. And if he was going to commit suicide, like I said, it's, suicide is premeditated. I'm not going to tell you how I know that. But it's premeditated. You plan to do it. There is a how, there's a why, there's a when, and there's a where. And... Um, you don't do it on the spot. You don't just right, especially like right after somebody steals your fabric and you're chasing them because they stole something of yours and you're going after them. You don't stop midstream and say, "Oh, hang on, wait, just you know what? This looks like a good time here. Just let me just grab this and hop over the edge before uh, Coco gets up here because she's right behind me." I mean, how? No, you don't. Suicide doesn't work that way. Okay, it, it doesn't work that way. I can't speak for everybody, but it would be very, very odd, very just off the rails, no pun intended, um, for someone to commit suicide that spur of the moment, that spontaneously. And furthermore, 
where he did it and when he did it, he incriminated two other ponies. He, one of them being the person he was going to propose to. He basically incriminated her for murder because she was she came right along behind him. So killing yourself there makes it look like a murder at the hands of the person that you were going to propose to. If you were going to do it, wouldn't you make it obvious that it was a suicide? Like, make it to where it didn't look like it was anybody else's doing? We had to prove that it was a suicide. It looks so much like a murder because there were two other parties up there on that catwalk. It's almost like overall concept wanted to frame one of them for his death. And why would he want to do that to the person he was going to propose to? It just, I don't know, it's weird. It, it's really weird. It's, it just, it leaves my head, it, it leaves me, it leaves me uneasy. It, it just, it, it's, it's, it's just really, really unsatisfying. All, all of the questions. You, you would think that, you would think that a not guilty verdict would just, you know, even though it doesn't remove all doubt, it just means that there wasn't enough evidence to convict. That's all a not guilty verdict is, and that's all you're going for. And I'm, and I'm so glad that they finally established that at the end, whenever Blue Blood was just dragging it on and just dragging it on, and finally Phoenix just had to say, look, we don't have to prove any of that. None of that's relevant to this case. You know, it, That should have been said an hour, maybe even an hour and a half before it was actually said. Um... But anyways, I still had fun. It was still enjoyable. I don't regret it. And I definitely will watch the next one. Um, the next one is in like four parts. So I don't know if that means that it's longer even or if they're, if it's divided into shorter parts. I haven't looked in that much detail. But it does involve the Cutie Mark Crusaders, um, which uh, I'm... I'm intrigued enough to watch it, but I'm also apprehensive because um, the CMC, seeing them in a position like this, that the type of, the idea of any one of the Cutie Mark Crusaders children being in the position of the type of emotional abuse that Coco Pomel was just subjected to, um, is really just that that's really uncomfortable for me to think about and I hope that we don't I hope that we don't see that but like I said I'm intrigued enough to watch so we'll see um, yeah this videos really long so I guess that's enough talking for me um, I do want to give a shout out to the, uh, the creators of this video uh, though elements of justice um, for uh, for watching the, the the second part and and you know watching my reaction and and kind of giving me feedback on it, I thought that was really cool. They they were really cool about stuff about questions that I had, and I <laughs> I should have apologized in advance. I should have apologized in advance because I was I, I thought I was going to be nicer um, on this one just for that reason that I know that they're going to be watching, but I ended up being way 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 more critical on this one than I, than I was even on the last one. Um, I mean, but to be fair, it took a turn that was just, that was just obscene. But still, anyways, <laughs> um, all in good fun, though. So, um, thanks to you guys. Um, for the rest of you, I guess, uh, if you're still here, I hope you enjoyed the reaction. Let me know if you did. I didn't say anything about this at the beginning, but if you did, uh, definitely like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. So, uh, with that being said, and with it being like 3 o'clock in the morning now, and I'm still not even sleepy because this video filled, this, this, this episode filled my head with so many thoughts that I'm going to need a Benadryl to go to sleep now, but... Hope you guys had fun. I know I did. And uh, till next time, guys, I am Stick Boy, and I will see you guys later.